everyone, my name is Ken Limes, and today I'm joined in conversation with Pascal Le Brasseur, who is the Director of Finance and Business Support at the Global Reservation Centre with Accor Hotels. She is also the mother of Emily, who is 22 years of age, trilingual, is also a cheerleader, a, an appreciator of wonderful hotels and hospitality, and a reluctant convert to baseball. Pascal, thanks a million for joining me today. And um, what is it you would like to share and chat about? Uh, well, first, thank you so very much, Gan, for the lovely introduction uh, about myself and Emily. Um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here and, and talking with you about traveling with my daughter. And um, we can certainly talk about cheer and baseball and everything else. I'm a big fan of my daughter, so we could go on forever. So I'll try to keep it into uh, the traveling uh, part of uh, our life. So Emily, just for a quick overview, Emily has Criduchat syndrome. So she's missing part of her fifth chromosome. The short version of, of what that does is create a global developmental delay uh, for her. So fine motor skill, gross motor skills or speech, uh, mentally. So there's delays um, all over, but she is a wonderful, she's a very wonderful human. Uh, she's into cheer and baseball and volunteering and arts. Um, she loves museums. She adores uh, traveling. Um, both her parents, uh, my husband and I were uh, in the hotel business when she was born. So she was born in it. Um, and she really appreciate nice hotels. Uh, food and all of those things uh, with us. Her visibility overall would fit in the invisible category unless you're really paying attention to her and really um, talking to her or if you're looking at uh, the behavior and what she does or the fact that she is a, an adult uh, with a doll or like you'll notice but in general if we're traveling we keep all the extra things to a minimum and um, it's not that obvious that I'm traveling with a young adult uh, with a disability. Um, she's a great traveler. She's very curious. She knows what to do through a custom and security and all of those things. So we've trained her very well. Um, but the key to traveling with Emily is planning. Um, so there's okay. a lot of planning research that goes into uh, everything. So if we are to fly somewhere, it's understanding uh, when we have to be at the airport, how much of a buffer she needs, what security would look like, um, what kind of security, is it the shoes off kind, is it the full body scan kind, is it, so understanding all of those things um, will make it easier to go through, through security. Having um, her flag as a person with disability uh, makes things easier uh, in the world where we try not to label people. It's sometimes upsetting that I do have to label her at every mm -hmm. step of the process, but I do have to label her um, for her own safety, for my safety um, to some degree, for making sure that it goes well. I do have to uh, put that label. I do have to flag her flights reservation. I do have to flag it in hotel reservation. I do have to explain um, to people that I've never met, that I will probably never see again, uh, why I'm traveling with this beautiful young lady, that she mm -hmm. is my daughter, um, that I do have a doctor's note to explain uh, why she's holding my hand, why I'm coaching her through every step of the way of, of the journey that we're on, uh, why we need a special pass at a park, or why uh, we can't wait in line in some certain places. So all of those things. Um, the more research I do, the more labels I apply on my child that I don't want to label, uh, the better our journey will be. Is there anything that can be done or you wish to see being done someday that might make the planning on your side as, as the mother of Emily more manageable? We went to Universal Studio in LA on the same trip. And we walked into the customer service and the gentleman there had was the most amazing human. It's like, seriously, we walked in and I said, good morning. 
and you could see that this young adult next to me was bubbly and excited. Um, and obviously we were on vacation, Universal Studio, she was very excited. And I said, good morning, he said, good morning. And then he looked at her and he said, good morning. And she obviously bubbly exploded with, with happiness. And right away he knew what we were there for. Mm -hmm. Right away, he recognized we needed an accessibility pass for the park because my lovely daughter um, has special needs, had mobility issues. And, and the conversation following that moment was between the two of them. He was talking okay. to her. He was making sure that she, like, you know, what do you need? What do we, let's see what we're going to do for you. And, and it just went on and on and on. And, and this gentleman was just so good in talking with my daughter like he was talking with her he was just there in that moment making sure that he was telling her exactly how to visit the park he was telling her the things she had to do he was giving her free gifts for being awesome so she was <laughs> you know cloud nine she was so excited he was excited the the energy just keep building people around us were just looking at this conversation going on thinking okay what is this and that you i do not believe fundamentally you can train someone to do that mm -hmm. i believe this gentleman has someone in his life or growing up or close by with a handicap of some sort or a disability of some sort and he's been made aware that through his personal connection, that that's how you treat someone. Yeah. You look at them, you talk to them, you interact with them, and then you go from there. You don't yeah. ignore them. You don't, yeah. you know, like look at the, the parent or look at, so he was the example of what we need more of, in my opinion, he was, uh, what I hope keeping our children um, included and involved and and present and and in the classroom and you know at the football game or in a cheer team or whatever it is that your uh, loved ones are doing. If as long as we continue to have, and I'm talking children, but that would be any type of disabilities the same, right? Like as long as the person in a wheelchair, the person in that have health issues and, and the propane tank. Like, we shouldn't hide our differences. Mm -hmm. And the only yeah. way to build that knowledge and make it easier is, in my opinion, to just have, not be afraid to have someone different next to you, not be afraid to engage in conversation with people that are not exactly the way you are. Uh, and the beauty of that is you will most likely discover someone interesting and you might actually open up your mind a little bit. Yeah. But, and I think any of the groups that would fall under minority would probably agree with that. It's like, don't, don't look through me. Don't look behind me. Don't look next to me. Don't talk to other people. Just talk to me. And that's really all I want for her is that for people to acknowledge that she's there and that she matters. That's, you know, that's, that's not a big ask. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it will be through small win. Mm -hmm. Just having people slowly, hopefully get comfortable with people that are different. Well, Pascal, you know, it's it's such a joy chatting with you. Um, I've I've loved uh, our conversations. Um, I love how you talk about your daughter Emily and and, and the wonderful experiences you share together. Um, and I thank you for 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 chatting to me about it. And um, I'd love to keep the conversation going. And I hope in a, a non pandemic world we may have the opportunity to to meet uh, in person and, uh, and and meet Emily at some point too. Um, so really appreciate your openness and your honesty and for your time and, and, and for sharing some insights uh, with me today. Thanks a million, Pascal. I loved it. 
So thank you for having me and allowing me time to talk about Emily and our lives a little bit.